Democrat Party Hates America by Mark Levin. This came out originally, it was published in September 19th, 2023. Fantastic book. Fantastic book. I recommend this to everyone. So this will be, when I get more organized and structured with what I'm doing, this will be required reading. But this was fantastic. This is, this is a broad overview of the Democratic Party. It goes over everything from its history, its origins, how they started, um, just the pure evil in their agenda that they've been up to. So going over, if you don't know Mark Levin, he is the host of nationally syndicated Mark Levin Show, host of Levin TV on the Blaze TV network, chairman of Landmark Legal Foundation, and host of the Fox News show Life, Liberty, and Levin. So if you don't know Mark Levin, you need to know this guy. He's always spitting facts. He's always You always see him on Fox News. He's fantastic, loves his country, and he really speaks out about what's going on. So what's interesting about the Democratic Party, I mean, this covers everything. So I want to go over, what's interesting is everyone says that the Republican Party is racist. So if you don't know your history at all about the Democrats and Republicans, now I'm not saying the Republicans are all squeaky clean 100%, but their agenda is nothing like what's going on with uh, the Democratic Party. They're pushing for this democratic socialism or this socialist or this American Marxist ideology. Um, the Democrat Party will stop at nothing to hold and maintain the power that they currently have. So, starting out, it gets into the, the Democrat Party and authoritarianism, basically showing that's going over their history, uh, what they've done in the past and leading up to now. You know, they cover, going on in this book, they cover, you know, Roosevelt, they cover Woodrow Wilson and the terrible things they did. Uh, they even get into how they're trying to use the Espionage Act against the Trump. So... But I'll continue. They get into the anti-black racism and anti-Semitism. They get into how, you know, the Jewish hatred has always been around and how what we've done in America, too, especially the Democrat Party, to um, discriminate and be racist towards the Jewish community. Anti-black racism, you know, this talks back about since the Civil War. It started, it, it touches briefly on the slave trade and it touches on the Civil War, uh, how the Civil War started. And it goes over the, the roles of the Republicans and the Democrats in that. And then how the whole war started, how everything formed afterward. Then it leads into the anti-white racism and anti-Semitism. So the anti-white racism, you might have wondered overnight. Like you think, I remember growing up, you know, I'm not that old. I'm going to be 34 this year. But growing up, yeah, you know, there's always jokes about the white man this, the white man that. You know, the white man holding people down, etc. But, you know, it was a little joke. And it was old though, you know. And growing up... You know, racism works both ways. You know what I'm saying? I'm half white and half Mexican. I grew up in a, in a school where it was a lot of blacks, a lot of Mexicans, and white. You know, and I didn't speak Spanish. So, yeah, I faced my discrimination. So, um, it, goes, it goes both ways with that. But it gets into... Let me gain my train of thought here. So, it gets into how the white man is the enemy. And you wondered, how did this happen? So how is it that the, we, the white man is demonized everywhere you go? And all of a sudden, like, you think that we might have been making some progress. And then when Barack Obama came in, you know, he completely changed everything up and started this race nonsense over again. Uh, people think Trump carried it on with the whole um, building the wall. And then Joe Biden, he blatantly spit it out there. But so the white man, why they hate the white man is they use him as a way to destroy the national identity of this country. The left and the Democrat Party and the critical race theory is trying to teach that, you know, the white man's evil. This country was founded on, you know, an evil premise of us uh, colonialists coming in and slaughtering the people here and taking over the land, etc., etc. So, and they're saying that everyone else from Mexico and Central America and other countries, yeah, because they cover immigration too. So they're basically saying they have a right to this land to come here and um, they shouldn't assimilate because uh, anything that the white man did is racist and, you know, it's their evil colonialist, colonialist mindset and their views and their oppressive nature that they put on the systematic racism. So they want to demonize the white man. They want to destroy anything, basically any traditional American values, you know, good old apple pie and baseball, you know, America and our freedoms. The reason that they want to flood this country so quickly and with so many people without assimilating and they want to demonize this country, that's why they teach in schools, on campuses. Uh, they're trying to teach in some elementary, middle, and high schools in certain parts of the country. They're trying to demonize this country as a whole. They don't want the youth um, 
understanding of the true history of this country. They don't want them to uh, appreciate, respect, love, and value their country. They want them to hate it. And then at that same time, you know, you have the left and the Democrats, these radical communists, socialists, etc., etc., that are trying to push this, uh, destroy everything. You know, they want to uproot the system. They want to push the socialist agenda. So in order to do that, they have to destroy what's currently in place. So the whole point is destroy our whole structure right now. Destroy anything that has to do with America. Anything with America is bad. And this this is all part to destroy our national identity. You can destroy our national identity and have a bunch of people that hate America and don't understand the, the history and the foundation this country was built upon. They're easier to brainwash. They're more susceptible to the propaganda and to doing what they're told. On top of that, these are future Democrat voters that will keep the Democrats in power. The Democrats do not care anything. The Democrat now... The Democrat Party, people say the old Democrat Party, this and that, the old Republican Party, and this and that. But no, they have been reaching for a serious power grab since World War II. Well, probably World War One, but we'll go. I'll just say World War II. But they've been making a huge power grab since then, and then they really went leaps and bounds during the whole COVID nineteen uh, lockdowns. That's when they made these mass moves, mass power grabs, changing everything. So they have been taken over. So as I've covered in other books, and it touches briefly on this too, the Communist Manifesto, and then how it uh, escalated and how it evolved into the peaceful takeover of the United States. You had to take over the United States, you have to take over the institutions from within and spread it out. And that's what has happened. So the Democrat Party, when they get in power, they're not foolish. They look at the big picture. They're not just like, oh, okay, we're in, you know, I'm a president. No, they want to change everything. That's why they're appointing all these justices. They're appointing all these federal judges, uh, senators. They got they got control of the Senate. They had control of the House. We just got control of the House. The Republican Party hasn't done much with that. Uh, and they're, they're pretty much running everything. The institutions. Uh, the Democrat Party has a lot of pull and a lot of power. You know, they own the teachers' unions. They own a lot of the labor unions. They own the media. They um, own a lot of the uh, what's going on in the college campuses. They own the... A lot of college, profession, college professors are the ones that were able to inf infiltrate the institution and are spreading a lot of this uh, Marxist ideology. But like I said, I can go in a million different chapters. It gets into the breakdown of the nuclear family. Uh, it gets into the civil rights movement. How they... So, again, the Republican Party is supposedly the most racist thing ever, yet the Democrat Party, you have no idea... They use the black people. They use the black community just to get in power. They use the black community to destroy the family and to keep them down. And then they spread that on to all communities. That's why there's an incentive. So they get on that. The war, they get into the war on the American citizen. I know I'm running brief on time. So I'm doing a brief overview of the book. A brief overview of the book. And I may have to get into uh, a few different topics later on. Because there's so much to cover and I do want to dive deeper into some of these things. So language control and thought control. So if you notice, if you turn on the TV, um, you know, and I'm not saying Fox News or nothing's perfect, but when you go to, uh, you got more right of center and conservative news outlets like the Daily Wire, Fox News, you know, they at least give some opinion and that's at least somewhat, it's going to be somewhat biased, but they do give credit where credit's due. They will criticize their own and they will praise the left if they do anything right, and they will condemn them. But they're not just sticking to one narrative and just pushing that script. So if you watch anything like CNN, uh, any anything left of center in those news outlets, they stick to a script. They're like robots, and they're changing language. They're changing the language they use on TV. They're changing change the language they use to um, identify people. They're changing definitions in textbooks and uh, dictionaries. They're changing definitions legally and thought control. This all has a part. If you can control the masses and their thoughts through the media, propaganda, etc., you got them. It's a way to take over without violence. It's peaceful. But right now, there is... There's a lot of backlash because the American people are waking up. So especially when COVID-19 happened and all the kids had to stay home, you know, everyone thinks this stuff is some far distant place. You know, luckily, here where I'm at, yes, I'm in the South, uh, you know, obviously a red state. So a lot of this nonsense we're protected from. But that doesn't mean it's some far away thing. It, it's, it's right around the corner unless they stand up. But when COVID-19 happened, teachers, um, 
they they started this whole online thing. I had to do it with my son from California. But parents got to see what their kids were actually learning and the nonsense being taught. And uh, they started to speak out against it. You know, this queer agendas, critical race theories, and um, there was a lot of backlash for that. Parents were put on a domestic terrorist watch list. They talk about how they weaponized the FBI and the Department of Justice, Homeland Security. They talk about the war on the Constitution. Let me cover everything. But yeah, these open border policies, clear, clear. I To get back to the book itself, very well put together. It just, it flows it goes in, oh yes, the suppression of speech and thought control, the Twitter files with Matt Taibbi and his fellow journalist, Michael Schellenberger. Oh man, they get into, so when Elon Musk bought Twitter, you know, so when COVID-19 happened and during the election, there was a lot of uh, suppression of speech and the FBI was directly involved with that. The White House was involved, Biden was involved with that. They were paying and controlling and threatening and extorting um, social media and different news outlets um, to push the narrative. Anything that was misinformation, disinformation, anything that was critical of uh, the current president uh, or of the Democrat Party was not to be aired. So it gets into all this too. But my time is running out. I got to go. Um, this covers everything uh, very well put together from beginning to end. It's everything in one. I like Unwoke is more cultural. Um, the other one I did with uh, Hydra Children, that is more the attack on the children and the push towards the family and the youth. But this one is like everything in one. So this one, Mark Levin did a fantastic job. I will be quoting this again later on. Um, and I'll be making more videos probably about this book. But just absolutely fantastic. But to end on an, another note is um, regardless of who's in charge, first, this country needs God. Because without God, we have nothing. And without God, where do our rights really come from? Whatever who's in charge says. So we need to get back to, we need to have a shift in America. We need to bring, bring back a revival in Christ and in God. We need to bring back a revival in our national identity. And then we need to hold everyone else accountable. Because right now, this country is lost, and it's in a fallen state. And not just this country, this world. But that's where we need to start. But I'll say, right here, I'm going to quote Samuel, Samuel 8, 9. Listen. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, others to plow his ground. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks, and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for the relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer. He will not answer you in that day. Oh, careful what you wish for. Everybody wanted a king back then. Same, same today. Everybody wants a certain president from a certain style, from a certain party, with the socialists. Everyone had the same thing. Now here, he's talking about he's taking a tenth. Right now, they're taking way more than a tenth of our stuff. Now, when they get, if they get how they want, they're, they're only going to be giving us a tenth. But God bless. Read the book.